All right, uh, trig lecture 118 and 119. The student will use a given point on the terminal side of an angle in standard position to find the value of an indicated trigonometric function. Uh, here we go, this is what we're talking about. We're going to use the given point, we're going to be given a point on the terminal side of an angle, so this is going to represent the terminal side, the point on the terminal side of an angle, and it's going to be in standard position, so that means the positive x-axis is going to be the initial side, and it's going to rotate positively or negatively to get to, to go through this point. And we're going to find the value of trigon trigonometric function that goes through that point. So here we go, here's how we do it. Use the given information to find the value of the trig function. Here we go. I'm going to do a quick sketch of this. I'm looking for the sine of theta. And I want the terminal side of my angle to go through this point. So here's what's happening here. Let's take a look at it graphically. There's y, x. Um, I'm going to go 2 to the right and down radical 5. Radical 5 is a little bit more than 2, so I'm going to go over 2 and down a little bit more than 2. And there's my point, 2, negative radical 5. And here, I'm going to draw a little triangle. I'm going to draw, first of all, here's my angle of rotation, or angle. And I want to know what is this angle right here. Well, the way we're going to find it is to draw this triangle in our little figure here. And I know that if I went over 2 and down negative 5, then the length of this side is 2. The length of this side is radical 5. We can ignore the negative. That's just a coordinate. The length is radical 5. The coordinate is negative radical 5. That means just, just means you go down instead of up. And what we're going to do is find the value of this angle right here. Keeping in mind that we're in quadrant four. All students take calculus. Remember that. All the trig functions are positive in quadrant one. In quadrant two, only the sine and its reciprocal are positive. In quadrant three, only the tangent and its reciprocal are positive. And in quadrant four, only the cosine and its reciprocal are positive. So I'm in quadrant four, so my sine of theta is going to be negative. So I'm going to write that down real quick so I don't forget it. Stick that right down here. That's where I'll write my answer. And now I just got to find the sine of this angle. Think of it as the reference angle in the little triangle that we draw here. And so in order to find the sine of this angle, the reference angle, so to speak, we're going to go opposite over, and this will be the hypotenuse of that little triangle. Over 2, down radical 5, that makes this little triangle right here. And we got to find our hypotenuse. Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem for that. I'll say uh, 2 squared plus 5 squared, that's the length. 2 squared plus, oh, I'm sorry, radical 5 squared. Two squared plus radical five squared will equal c squared, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it c just because of keeping with the a squared plus b squared equals c squared idea. This gives me four plus five. Square root of five times the square root of five is five is equal to c squared. This is nine is c squared. Therefore, c is plus or minus three. But we're going to ignore the negative because we're talking about the length of this. So length is never negative. So we just call it 3. Now I can find the sine of this angle right here. It's the length. Be the opposite over the hypotenuse, radical 5 over 3. And because we're in quadrant 4 and we're evaluating the sine function, it's going to be negative. So it'll be negative radical 5 over 3. And that's our answer. Let me scroll that up. 
There we go. This will be our response. Whoops. Messed it up. We found the value of the trig function. The, we, we used a given point on the terminal side of an angle in standard position to find the value of the indicated trig function. Here's the terminal side that goes through the point that was given to us. We found the value of this trig function by finding the value of its reference angle and bearing in mind that we're in quadrant four, so the sign is going to be negative. Okay, that's what we did. Let's do another couple or three. Get rid of this scratch work. Oops. And I'll scooch this over a little bit so I have room to work. Okay, so we're going to go with sine function again. You go, it, it's any trig function. It doesn't matter what the trig function is. You just got to remember the identity of the, the definition, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, so forth and so on. And I'm looking at this point. XY coordinate plane. That's my origin. I'm going to go negative 9, radical 19. Well, radical 19 is bigger than 4. And so I'm going to go uh, negative 9. I'll call this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'll go negative 9, and then down, this is a little bit more than 4. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, roughly. So it'll look something like this. Here's the triangle we're going to be dealing with. 9, then we went down, radical, oh, I'm sorry. We went up radical 19. I went down for some reason. I'll tell you why I went down, because I'm old. In brain damage. Radical 19 is a little bit more than 4. So here's where our point will be. And our angle will look something like that. And that will make this the length 9, 9 to the left, and up radical 19. And here's our angle theta. And so I'm going to find the sine again, so it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So once again, I want to find the length of this hypotenuse right here. So I'll do that. If I can. Hopefully I can. I didn't check to see if I got my other answer right. I'll check it here in just a second. Uh, doing a little bit of scratch work. 9 squared plus radical 19 squared is equal to c squared. That gives me 81 plus 19. 9 times 9 is 81. Radical 19 times radical 19 is 19. We add those together. What is that? Is that 100? Okay, that's nice. So if c squared is 100, c is plus or minus 10. But since we're talking about a length, we're going to ignore the negative root. That'll make this 10. And now I can find the sine of this rotation by finding the sine of the reference angle and bearing in mind that I'm in quadrant two. In quadrant two, the sine is positive. So this, unless I've made a mistake, the sine of theta is radical 19 over 10 and it'll be positive. Let's scroll a little bit. Isolate that so it's a little easier to see. That's supposed to be a 19 under there. Yeah, let me check my answers. I didn't check number one. Let me see if it's right. Negative radical 5 over 3. Yay! And radical 19 over 10. That doesn't look like a radical 19. I'm going to fix that. So hopefully that's making sense, what we're 
we're doing here. We're going to find the reference angle. Visualize the little triangle. It's the result of going over to the down radical 5 or to the left 9 and up 19. And we're going to find the sine of the angle that's formed by the terminal side that goes through this point, bearing in mind that trig function. Let's try another. Sign again. This, the computer generated these. I should have paid more attention than different trig functions, but it doesn't matter. You do the exact same thing regardless of which trig function you're using. I'm going to uh, be looking for the sine of theta from uh, bearing in mind that the terminal side is going to go through this point. So let's take a look at this. Here's what we're looking at. I'm going to go 3 to the left and down radical 7. And radical 7 is less than 3. Okay. Less than 3 down. Somewhere right around in here. There's our terminal side that contains that point. And this is the triangle we're looking at. We're going to go 3 to the left, down radical 7. And again, these lengths are positive. This length from here to here is 3. This length from here to here is radical 7. The coordinates, however, negative 3 and negative radical 7, they're just negative to indicate which direction you go and how you wind up here in quadrant uh, 3. We're in quadrant 3. So all students take calculus. Sign is only positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. All students. Take calculus. Sine and the cosecant are positive here. Everything's positive here. So since I'm looking for the sine in quadrant three, my value is going to be my sine is going to be negative in quadrant three. And I got to go opposite over hypotenuse. And once again, I got to do the Pythagorean theorem. And I will say, well, that's three squared plus radical seven squared. is equal to c squared. That would be the length of our hypotenuse right here. Here's the little triangle we're drawing, and here's our reference angle. And here we go. This is 9 plus 7 is equal to c squared. That's 16 is equal to c squared. So c is equal to plus or minus 4. However, since we're talking about a length, we're going to ignore the negative root and say that the length of this side is 4. And now I can find the, hypo uh, the uh, sine of this uh, angle by saying the op opposite over the hypotenuse, which is radical 7 over 4. However, I've got to bear in mind that I'm in quadrant 3. So this is actually going to be a negative ratio negative radical 7 over 4. Normally I put that minus sign first so I won't forget, but I forgot to put it first. But I didn't forget to put it uh, when I got done, so yay. Now let's see here. Yay, negative radical 7 over 4. That's our answer. I did it in blue this time. Okay. And here's our scratch work. I'm going to get rid of that. Pythagorean theorem. And we'll do one more. Scooch this over a little bit. Okay, we're looking for the tangent this time. And we've got 2 radical 3, 2. It's going to put us in quadrant 1. Weird looking why. Okay, 2 radical 3, that is 3.5-ish, about 3.5, 2 radical 3, yeah, 3.46-ish, so I'll call it around 3.5 in length. Uh, I'm going to go 1, 2, 
three, four, so I'll go over around 3.5 and then up two. Over around 3.5 and up two. That just gives me a rough idea of what it looks like. And that's two radical three, two, those are the coordinates of that point. Ah, oh, I moved my point. So I'm looking for that angle. So I'm going to draw a quadrant one triangle. I'm going to go over two radical three, up two. That gives us a right triangle. And I want to evaluate the tangent function, and I'm in quadrant one, and in quadrant one, all functions are positive. So I'm going to say the tangent function is going to be positive, and it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So I don't need to uh, uh, find the length of the hypotenuse in this case. I don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just going to say, well, that's two over two radical three. And I'm going to simplify that and rationalize the denominator. I'm pretty sure your calculators will pr do what I'm about to do. I'm going to do it old school. Uh, these would cancel. You're giving you 1 over radical 3. And then we rationalize our denominator. I'm multiplying by a fancy form of 1, radical 3 over 3. And that will give us the wrong uh, radical 3 times 1 is radical 3. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to say that the answer key would say that the tangent of theta is radical 3 over 3. I think that your calculator, if you entered 2 over 2 radical 3, your calculator would simplify it and put it like that if you have one of these. The TI, whatever it's called, TI30XS, is pretty good about rationalizing denominators. Those are the ones we checked out to you, so hopefully you have one. And I hope that's right. I haven't checked it yet. Let's see if that's correct. Radical 3 over 3, yay! Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're using a given point on the terminal side of an angle, so they give us the point, and then I went ahead and drew the angle after I located the point. And it's a rough location. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just gives me an idea of what quadrant I'm in. So we use a given point on the terminal side of an angle in standard position to find the value of an indicated trigonometric function. In each case, the first three cases it was sine, but it doesn't matter. You just use the definition. The cosine will be adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent from the perspective of the reference angle. Always use, go from the perspective of the reference angle from the terminal side to the closest x-axis is the reference angle. Okay? You can do this.